Welcome back, everybody, to another VOD Breakdown. Today, we're going to be talking about our favorite, America's number one team, 100 Thieves falling to Gen G, a two seed, even. And this isn't even like the upper final, right? This is a semi. So, really surprising result here that 100 Thieves actually don't even end up sneaking a map in this series. Um, their own map pick of Icebox is going to go the way of Gen G, and they're not going to be able to close out Ascent. So, we're going to try to break down here what went wrong for 100 Thieves and uh, how Gen G's confidence and how well they were playing kind of like played into this entire thing. Now, my favorite thing about 100 Thieves is like their energy, right? Busio mainly being like the leader on that. Even Austin at times as well. Just standing up and down, jumping, laughing at you, pointing at you, pointing at the pig, calling you a pig. Riot has taken away the pig. They took it away. Um, I don't know if it was viewed as kind of like derogatory, because obviously like a pig is a dirty animal, it's an animal that lives in filth, so I don't want to say that's offensive to be called a pig, but you know, it, it, there's nothing to do with that, right, it, it's not personal whatsoever, you know, you're, he's not literally calling you a disgusting human being, right, he's calling you a fucking pig because you made a mistake, or like, you know, you trolled or something like that, whatever, right, so really surprised to see that, um, I don't think that that was the reason why Hard Thieves lost today, but I think if they're, you know, being restricted to like this behavioral standard or something like that, you know, it's kind of weird, and being in a position where, you know, Riot will not necessarily entice you, but, you know, you're allowed to kind of like, you know, shit talk or like, you know, say some uh, predictions or things on how you feel in teams and interviews and stuff like that, or like the the Riot-based content and that you're restricted on the stage. Kind of like confusing to me and something that I hope that doesn't continue to be there. So we're going to see the speed of like 100 thieves here really just like how fast they go uh this could have been some sort of anti but i was really surprised to see how quick they just like ran this down munch is going to be in a position to do an aggro knife if he wants to get all that info on a and then we're going to be running like a flash trap over here in b main so as you can see texture is already pre-aiming like a dart in this position I think Karan will be able to help that as well. And Locky is on the inside, able to like throw a dizzy or be able to peek on timing, like whatever it is. So, Barry's going to drop here. Come and win the whole thing. And thieves, gonna the run-up is going to happen. Flash is going to be thrown with the dart. Gets broken with no scans. Look how fast they're moving here. Locky with two. Gets a third. Everybody is dead. Everybody is dead in this round within 20 seconds. So nice little like anti-strat setup here. Again, kind of like surprising to see this like come through from 100 thieves, where again just like look how fast this type of stuff happens here. Munchkin's totally by himself, grabbing the orb on A, knows that there's no kind of like uh, things happening over here. Double initiator is shown, trap goes through. I just want to watch this one more time to again just like show how like not clueless, but just like fast paced this entire thing was. Arthies really get caught off guard here. And Genji, you're going to be able to begin to snowball this defense half now. Something that I've been not waiting on, but just uh, something I was going to expect, I guess, is like when 100 Thieves like disrespect their like casualness to the game is going to like catch up to them. And I think this is kind of like a good example of that. The thing that I griped about Genji on the most in this Fnatic breakdown that I did was how base they are on their individual plays and that they don't really have like a well versing of like the push and pull the opportunity taking the risk involved and you know i kind of like to showcase that here like how bad of a play this was but it ends up working out and sometimes that's just how it goes right if you are unaware if you are not able to capitalize as 100 thieves when when um meteor makes a play like this you know Unfortunately, you're the one who fucked up, right? It doesn't matter how bad the play was. You were the one who got caught off by it. So we see control come out here from Gen G, three-person control with an operator. Why on God's earth, Meteor, are you making a play right now? Like, why? You have an entire fucking army of robots with you on here. The fact that you are going to take a 50-50 here is literally disgusting. And this is why I could really never, uh, because this is a trend on all the maps they play, okay, with everyone on this team. I could never be able to put money down on this team with the results they get and how random that they are. So we're going to see that come out here, and we're going to see kind of like how, not necessarily lazy, but just like casual this approach is from 100 Thieves. Double initiator utility over here. The drone is coming out and clearing everything. So I don't understand why we're not waiting for it, and I don't understand why we're going full audible, right? Like, do, do we think that this is like you know, just empty, right? Do we think that no one can peek? It's impossible for somebody to peek. It's impossible for the DL setup. I don't think so. I think we could just like wait for the drone to do its job, but we're just sitting right under the drone. 
a meteor ends up getting two here. And now that I'm seeing this, it almost seems like, you know, he was, like, planning to break the drone and run away, but they went full audible, so he just, like, went for this play. But again, I just think that this is, like, just pretty crap and just, like, lucky from Meteor. Uh, but it's just bad on Hire Thieves that they're just, like, playing like this. Just chasing down the drone, trying to, like, run at these guys. It's it's just silly. So now the player they're trying to make in mid just isn't even possible anymore. In the 5v3, everybody's going to be holding this. Boosty and Bang are going to get backed up here. They're going to try to regroup with EU. The deep A line is there. The mid control is there. The B main delay is there. It's just too free. Texture's going to angle out here. Zone them into B main. They're fully herded now. What is herding, you're asking? It's where on the map uh, you are in positions where you are herding them like they are sheep or they are cows, right? So you're forcing them into a position based on the pressure that you have and you understand that they are locked into that position. So again, the A and the mid players are herding them into the B players is what we mean there. 5v2 situation, you Bustio, trying to do what they can. It's not a good look. I also don't really think saving is going to be possible here. They're going to activate the alarm bomb on a double swing. Meteor's going to protect his back with his molly. One way is going to go up, and now it's just impossible to get through. Bustio angling out, dying. He's going to farm his orb before he gets taken out here. And Meteor's going to build a lot of confidence on a multi-kill like this. And this is a really important round to win for Gen G after losing uh, their bonus to 100 Thieves because they can now carry this op forward into the defensive side. So another really, really big round of this half here where, you know, we're coming out with a full investment as 100 Thieves. I mean, look at the money, right? We have our Thrash online. We're down to literally no money in the bank. The money is starting to bolster over here on Gen G. They have the op. They're going to have one, two, three, four, five ults come online in the next two rounds. It's going to be really, really hard to bring back this attacker side. I think 100 Thieves, again, have always been the ones who disrespect people and who don't care and play super loose. And I think that when they play up against teams who kind of show that back to them, sometimes it can kind of like be sh like a struggle for them because they aren't playing like themselves right now. Okay, they're kind of like pussyfooting around and like doing this like push and pull, like play, being quiet, right? Being lazy and they're getting punished for it. Compared to Gen G. So EU is going to come out and he's going to dart this and he's going to get solo pinged here. He's trying to jump spot his own push. He's going to call that. There's either nothing there or he thinks it's just Charon. Look at this. Lucky has walked all the way through at the start of the round. So I think that this is just a play that's being made by Gen G specifically because they have the Gecko Wall online. So number one, they either know that um, that they like to go B with the Gecko Alt, so they're going to stack this and try to like trap him here with that knife being used to set them up, or they know that either EU is going to make some sort of noise here and they can try to kill him before he runs away. I know that the players did tweet that Genji had a great game plan and anti, so that definitely could be the case, but another insta-man advantage. Texture being able to take his time here, peaks on timing of the flash dropping. I'm not going to say that I don't like that peak in the 5v4, you know, since he has his dash and he has the duelist, he can kind of like play how he wants, and again, and that disrespect, that like getting in your face, that's what Gen G are going to do to 100 Thieves this entire series. Another 5v3, another like double or triple man advantage within 20 seconds here. Now, Hunter Thieves can only just hold for bushes. They can only play out this round as well as Gen G let them. So they're not going to use the Thrash. The Mollies are going to go through. Wingman's going to get burned and die. Austin gets caught on the rope. Bustio with a nice trade. Dodges the op shot here. But remember, we use ults to win rounds. So here's Texture's Knives coming out. Even though he doesn't convert, that was so disruptive and difficult to deal with that we can get a trade off of it. Bang down to 1 HP. Much can able to convert that kill. And Genji are going to start running. This was an absolute Charon legacy series. I mean, the guy played actually insane. Uh, Meteor, definitely like an unsung hero of this too, with the amount of kills and impact that he was getting. But this team just came into this game with confidence and they wanted to disrespect 100 Thieves. They, they did not want to be the next team who's going up in a T-Dog video, getting laughed at while Boostio calls you a pig. So I respect it a lot. We're going to see a Hunter's Fury play come out here from 100 Thieves, which is a nice call. We have the Viper's Pit online, so what we can do is we can use our initiator ults, right, to get into the bomb site, to empty out the bomb site, and we can drop that pit on the ground. Something as well to notice. We got a stink bomb going on here. Cryo, oh, and six. Those slow starts are very, very difficult to deal with. And this is kind of like, not necessarily reminding me of, but since it was recent, the 100 Thieves of last year, where it was difficult to get Cryo online and he was kind of struggling on a lot of these maps. So the drone's going to come out here. Munchkin is confident playing this by himself. He's done this multiple times now. 
He's going to get pinged. Hunter Spirit's going to come through. He's going to throw his knife and ult. Trying to stop it, but he's not going to be able to. Uh, backing this up, I think that uh, it, it's hard. Boosty would be able to break it. I was going to say that he could have thrown his knife deeper somewhere, maybe, because he knows that the drone came from this belt position, right? That's where the drone will come from. So the fact that he's throwing it there isn't really going to get any pings. And then he ends up pulping his ult late. So it kind of sheets to the side, like, what, he, what does he want to do? Do you want to stop the ult? Okay, you probably need to pulse, like, right there. And I think it would ping him once. And all you need is a one ping to turn the Hunter's Fury off, right? But he ends up throwing his knife and kind of, like, fumbling over his utility, and it's going to get knocked down here. Now, the underrated part of this is now he's kind of like a drone on the mini map right so he's going to be able to pop up people on the genji's mini map that are coming through gen that are coming through short that are taking the rope over he's kind of like that drone where he can see and on top of the fact when hard thieves can't use any utility anymore so going through this screen dry is really hard right there's no recon flash combo going in right it's just a wingman and people scale or sorry you can't even wingman you have to scale forward here so this is even necessarily like a 5v4 this is just a guy on the ground so the Flood comes in from Gem G here, since they can use Utility and they can't. Charon 1, Lakia 1, Charon 2, and a third. Really nice shots here. 1v1 situation for Texture. Texture, nice patience there. Rare, kind of like EU rush situation, non-clutch masterclass. And just as I talk about being him being 0-7, here are these individual moments that you just like, unfortunately, you're going to have to deal with at this level. So many people are so damn good at just killing you. Okay, and we're going to have two moments of it in this round, and then Karen's going to come out on top here. So Cryo's going to get suppressed. Not going to be able to use his knife in that timing. We're going for like a flash peek. He's going to get punished by Karen, who's immediately dropped to 20 HP. Nice high ground here. Cryo with his first. Cryo with his second. And he's going to end up getting a third here on the detained Lakia. Now, solo in the pit, Karon on 20 HP. We know the damage on this player. EU is the one who did it. He actually plays out of his pit and repositions in time all the way to Maze. He's going to catch Bustio running away for his third of the round. Austin and now, in a 2v1 situation with a Stinger, is going to opt to try to kill the lower HP player that he knows rather than the other one who's missing. Finally finds him. Texture gets the trade. Really well played from Genji. Nice flood, nice trades, nice setup. So let's talk about situation recognition, how to use it, what to do in the moment. Genji does it almost flawlessly here. Okay, first things first. Texture is inching up this A line. He's working over here. The double initiators are working B. Okay, Karen is on an island. He's calling that not only does that he need help, but that there's numbers over here. You can make a play. Great. Sounds good. I'm walking up with my op now. Slowly looking for this lurker of Bustio. Okay. They kind of both see each other here. We don't actually know, but we know based on how they play this out. No, watch how fast. Okay. 111 is when this happens. Watch how fast Gen G now run this full on B kind of like push reclear trap play thing. Slowly moving over. They know we have the line. They know it's just Jet, right? Hunter Thieves are kind of like indecisive on what they want to do. They're still trying to like make this yellow clear thing happen, going all the way in. Even though Cryo gets caught, the four person B fight is going to come out here. And Genji are going to go two for one here. Bustio's trying to take a timing on the fact of the numbers. Meteor's going to catch him. Trying to hold the cross, but he already made it. I really like this play here. When you're ever in the clutch with Gecko, the main thing that you want to do, if you have the opportunity, obviously, is to not play with Wingman, right? Let him be your third teammate. Yo, bro, go plant the bomb, right? I'm going to go aggressively hold the flank. I'm going to go aggressively rewrap. I'm going to go push rafters. Anything like that will catch people off guard. I, I, I will go as far to say as every single time. Not, not just 9 out of 10 times, every single time they will get caught off by it. Cryo's going to get caught off here, unfortunately, looking at mid uh, for Meteor, who ends up flanking since there's no sentinel 2v1 situation little man gets the bomb down not the best plant but still not bad also is really far out of this round he's gonna go for a spam here and he does it he does it very 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 late and i'm surprised that he waited that long hits two nice shots but you know unfortunately it's still down nine to two hunter thieves have this pistol round their chance to get back in the game they end up closing out the last round 
Okay, not putting them in the absolute best position, but you know, obviously better than a 10-2 here, right? We at least have a little space to work with. We're going to start in a standard 2-1-1 here, something with a, some sort of little bait over here for Crow to get kills. Bustio's pulling off of his own turret in mid with an anti-plant molly on A, and then we have double initiators over here farming this orb. Very common here. Or being grabbed. What's a little different is that the Viper wall is here, and with this KO gecko combo, this double initiator, people will do this a lot, and they will just exec this bomb site, right? They don't care about putting the wall on B, right? They want have the smokes here they want to exec this bomb site they want to screw you over flash is going to come through scally's going to come in no one's going to break the dizzy caron first blood lucio with a nice 2k trade here also trying to help him with the dizzy still angling out caron with his second meteor with one now now we're in a 3v2 munchkin dies face checking for whatever reason cryo and bang 2v2 both have deagles. They don't know about Bang just yet. Bang's actually going to walk out here and get one deaged. Now they know the last remaining player is Cryo. Meteor's going to get caught out here. 1v1 situation. I really love this reposition and this outplay in this clutch. Because what we're going to see here is how confused Karen is. He's going to tap and look to fight because he's on 1 HP. He thinks Cryo's going to use the fact that he's 1 HP to fight him right now. He's not. Cryo going for an instantaneous reposition on the flank here. The mistake that's being made here is going up this rope. I cannot believe. I cannot believe that he has the audacity to go up this rope here. You have the timing. You have the play. Continue to walk on the ground get there as fast as possible, right? Because he's still looking for your rafters. He's still looking for your screens. He thinks you're trying to fight him because you're one HP. You have the timing. Keep walking out towards Jen. Keep walking up Maze. Try to catch him on timing. He goes up the rope. He's going to end up making noise here in like a panic fashion. I feel like he can just wait here if he wants. He floats and drops on metal and then he runs and panics. Karen with his fourth kill on the round. Again, legacy gain from this guy. And he's waving him goodbye, man. I mean, Jesus. Talked about it once and talk about it again, individual moments, right? Munchkin is a fully kitted guy with a SAR in Rust, and he's killing nakeds on the beach with this Guardian. I mean, this is insane work. He's going to end up getting an ace here, and again, this confidence, being able to close this map out with these individual performances that Genji is so good at using, and they rely on, okay, this confidence is going to carry over into the next map, I can promise you that. Deagle's trying to angle out, waiting for the fuel to drop here. Munchkin's still just facing. Knives to reconfirm positions here. Just tapping them out, man. Just tapping them out like it's nothing. Now, I know in this breakdown we're not talking about 100 Thieves in the most positive light, but I do just want to talk about how much of a force they are to reckon with. Down 3 to 11, they're going to bring it back all the way to 10, and they're basically going to end up losing this round because of the ults. Okay, and this again, this is what I'm talking about, Gen G. The inconsistency of their performance relying on individual moments is alarming. Okay, the results may vary. Okay, it could be really good and it could be really bad. Being up 11 3 on your opponent's map pick and really slowing down and almost giving them a chance to win this game is super sus. Okay, this was a very close matchup. This by no means was some sort of blowout. This was 100 Thieves kind of like laziness and fail, failing to kind of like take it a little more serious than I wanted them to on top of Gen G playing very disrespectful and running around and doing whatever they want. So round's going to begin here. He is going to farm his orb. Looking for this op kill here. E was the only player who was scanned. He's going to shoot right between his legs. Really insane reposition here from Texture with that updraft dash. Meteor's going to instantly take a lurk timing in mid with Charon since Bustio has been found on A fighting. And it's just a really nice call and just set up in general from Genji. So they know that this is the win condition here, stopping this bomb from getting planted. He's going to throw a mosh. He's going to run away in the orb. He had a teammate to help him. Very nice job. With the Viper's Pit in play, they're going to go for this kitchen ult here, and they're going to put mollies on the bomb, and this is just going to be completely unwinnable. So planted on the bridge here, they're going to have full control of top site and kitchen, and they're going to sit here, and they have plenty of defusal denial, right? They have the Viper Molly, they have the swarms, they have the lockdown if they really need it. Okay, this is basically impossible for Hunt Thieves to win. They need some insane timing, and they need a fuck up from Genji. They need them to mess up somehow, but Genji aren't going to do it. They're going to hold on to this little win condition that they have here, and they're just going to sit. Lackey has control of the rope. If you go up, you're decayed. Okay, Karen has his 
back. Meteor has his front. They're going to mosh, try to take some space here. Drone's going to go up. Also, just one second early on the play. EU is going to be able to get Lakia. He's trying to shock the swarms, but he's just out of time. He's just going to be able to try to look for someone rapping. He's just going to have to save. And Genji are going to go up to match point. So even though winning your opponent's map pick is a good confidence boost, again, uh, Hunter Thieves made a big comeback there. So they're not down and out by any means. You know, they didn't just get like 13 2 or something like that. Like, you know, they, they did make a comeback. Cryo, again, who was down, I think, 06 at the start of the round, or at the start of the game, he finished like 18 and something, right? So he's back. He's okay. He's online. Hunter Thieves are going to operate in a 2 1 2 setup here. Again, same exact pistol that they ran on the icebox side here, where the site partners just have like a little plan of what they want to do. And then Cryo, or the mid player, is able to kind of like float to like either side and like be disruptive. Great anti here from Gen G. Um, somehow they kind of know that this is going to be like their best option to do this fast A pop. They have some nice utility layering here and some trading that we're going to showcase now. Pop Flash is going to go to clear this angle. TP is going to go in. We're going to run in right now. Bang kind of makes a mistake here and does an aggressive smoke. Um, he throws this smoke just because he doesn't understand the context of what's going on. So in the timing that he wasted that, uh, this becomes much less scary to come out of. And then he has to waste his time throwing a sight smoke. And then he has to blind. What's kind of confusing here is EU is actually going to stick his dart up on the wall as they are going in. So when the dart goes in, he's getting no scans. And I think his play here is he either thinks that only texture is out in his smoke which he isn't because Charon bought TPs to get in here um, but he's going to angle out of the smoke trying to peek with the paranoia but it was just one second too early and he's going to get first blooded so another kind of like not necessarily a mistake but just miscommunication here from one heart thieves mistiming whatever you want to call it so both these players are blind but no one's able to punish here bang hiding in his sight smoke cryo angling out he's going to get one he's going to get traded Cryo isn't going to be able to convert one. Oz is going to try to jump out here. And he yeah, doesn't even give him a chance to play the 2v4. Busio now very, very low. I mean, look at the HP on this group here. Busio with a very, very rare whiff. And Genji with another pistol are going to be able to run away with this attack half. And I don't want to make this seem personal towards Meteor because we literally already talked about it on the last game. But I cannot even comprehend the thought process that you have to have to think that this is a good play for what he's about to make. Okay, here we are. Bonus. Not game on the line, but like potentially half on the line, right? This is a very important round. You cannot just throw this shit away by over peeking or getting caught off by something simple. Cryo has invested to full save for an operator. He's glass cannoning here. We understand that that's in play. We need to be like, you know, smart about it. We're going to see a big mid default come out here from Gen G, and then the unthinkable is going to happen with Meteor. I mean, how often are you going to reach into the cookie jar and not get caught? I, I can't believe it. The knife is going to land in mid. The drone is coming out the drone is coming out wait for the drone you bum just wait for the drone again that's not personal it's just me being mad as an igl okay um i i just can't believe that he's getting away with this shit he is pre-fire one tapping cryo cells on this top mid three angle before the drone is even coming out to clear it for him absolutely if you see him right you know if you want to take that fight when he's running away sure bro but i mean damn i mean this guy just doesn't care obviously and it's working so he has no reason to stop i guess instant 5v4 situation after this big mid prod with this fake pressure with that smoke they're ready to go into cat here they're holding for a reaction now texture now sees it bang has to use his blind another miscommunication from asana and bang here this kind of like dynamic duo that's failing to operate on the same page um not that they haven't yet i was more so referring to the eu situation where you peeked before the blind but the same exact thing is happening here right we have one guy angling out we have one guy backing up to throw his blind something we don't see a lot on this one heart thieves team they're usually you know together and like doing things it's like on top of it, they're able to communicate in proper timing. Thankful blind misses his TP, ends up dying. 5v2 situation in 30 seconds. Very quick, fast paced plays from Gen G here. Hunter Thieves getting caught off. And here we are, you know, kind of like forced to kind of like save or maybe clear out this lurk. Bustio is going to punish one. And he's never going to be able to expect Lakia here. 4v1 for EU. She has to save again. I'm just confused how this even happened. And Genji are going to be able to convert this bonus. And again, are going to run away with this attack F. Because it's happening so much, I need to continue to talk about it. 
Genji again have converted the bonus. They're now going up against Hunter Thieves, who's on a full save. Pistols, Stingers, Frenzies, Shorties, whatever you have to worry about. They're just going to try to take their time and go kind of like place by place on this. Look at the difference between extremity players. One player in a more safe position, using distance to advantage. One player just horny as fuck, just trying to get as many Ecos as he can. I mean, this is literally ridiculous that this guy is doing this right now. We're slowly clearing out mid. We have the opportunity to kill Bang, who gets seen going into his smoke for him here. Texture's gonna try to spam him out. We only confirmed, like, what, three people there? Maybe four, if that was a... Yeah, that was a Austin Akeo flash that came over Cat. So it's like... Walking up B main here, I just I just can't even like believe that he, he's doing that on his own timing. Like again, he's not getting caught off like walking up because there was like a big mid fight. Like he he wasn't gonna plan on stopping. So he gets first blooded here, causing Gen G to have to waste a bunch of resources and time trying to defend this gun from getting picked up. He already sneaks away with it. And now they're gonna cheat back to A here on good timing. Good early advantage here for Hunter Thieves. And it's huge. Utility is going to be so invested weak. here to B to probably that clear this off. Or Austin is just going to hear this guy walking up. Austin hears they're running in mid with the smoke. He's going to call it already back. Agro alarm bot sees nothing. He tries to fragment to delay. Goes for a spam. Gets nothing. 5v4 here. We're going to wait to group and kill. Everything's open. They can be behind us. They can be in front of us. They can be in a site. They can be in A. This is fucked. We're jumping out here. This is a terrible smoke thrown from Charon. I mean, this is just a the smoke you could jump out with. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure what that was supposed to be. Or maybe that was a flood smoke from one of these eyes. I can't really tell. I'm pretty sure it was a Charon smoke, though. Just lets those close range weapons jump out here. And now, a half that could have started 05, even 07. It was going to get slowly halted here, you know, by a thrifty. Just, you know, just wandering around doing whatever we thought was good. Just look. Just look. The suppression here on the Busio, still holding and... I mean, this is unironically Bustio's best gun, so... Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, that's pretty good, Meteor. Keep it up, man. A very uncharacteristic, like, showing here for 100 Thieves. Uh, I just don't think that they have this, like, A bomb site played to the standard that they normally do. I don't really know what's going on. Genji have slowed down pretty much. Okay, Hearthies have won five in a row on this defensive side with ults, the op. Okay, a couple individual moments here and there. Uh, Ascent is a map where you can't actually get so creative with your strats that you know you can keep picking from a hat. Okay, defaulting is like your go-to on this map. Different speeds of a default, putting people in different places, taking different things at different times. That's the type of stuff you're gonna see here. Genji, you're gonna scrap it all. They've been failing. They keep getting op. They keep getting Odin. Okay, they're just gonna go back. To their a hit that worked and you know this is bread so, and butter so for them smart. flash gonna go through tp to scale getting in no knife over an a main no command's gonna go out we didn't contest either orb which is pretty concerning i mean i don't know what this is i don't know if this is an anti ko setup or or what this is supposed to be but i mean this is like a i don't i don't even know okay we have look at look at the look at the lines here we didn't have a single person start in a phase one or an aggro position this half. We have two people starting in phase two, just sitting back. And then we have three people in phase three, like literally backs against the wall, nowhere else to go. We have no info. We're just like waiting around, I guess, trying to stuff them when they rush, but we don't get there in time. Asa is going to preemptively rotate. Bang is going to get a sight smoke down. I cannot believe that he is not going to play in this. This is very, again, like uncharacteristic like for, of him. I, I, I don't know what this decision is here to go out. You don't have a dart. You did have a flash, but at the end of the day, like, I think that we just need to like delay. I think that flash is great cover and it could be used as kind of like misdirection you know if you do want it maybe you can come out on the back side and you could be looking for people like that are this guy that's like dashing top gen or like someone who's like scaling out over here going out in front of the dice is suicide first blood also trying to flood out alted dead i mean look at the assists here i mean three person assist on a kill uh, of a defender i mean that's just incredible cryo next to take a swing gets one unable to get out 2v4 situation for 100 Thieves now. Just going one by one by one. 
And these 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 situations of well have been like played like a little weird. This this one has been much better, but uh, the sound bait goes in for Busio to get a kill here. But these two v fours, two v threes, really have been being thrown away by Hunter Thieves constantly going for like instant like a uh, you know reposition or like instant timing plays, instant like takes, things like that. Nice flash here from Munchkin. It's just gonna like reset them and slow them down. He's gonna get one with the spam. Busio's gonna drop again. Not really on like the same page here. He is going to drop. Almost gets Munchkin. Genji convert a six ha six around attack half on ascent. They're on map pick, so well done there. The main thing that we've gone over with situations like this is actually the G2 team. Okay, constantly getting e would when they win pistols. Hunter Thieves win. The attack pistol have a chance to come back and win this map down 1-5 at a point. Okay, now I've come back and brought it to 6-6, won the pistol. They're up 7-6 now, and they're just going to throw this round away and get ecoed. They're going to bring in three rifles, one pistol, and a stinger. Texture Meteor, our fighters here, are going to have some deagles. I think they might have gotten some kills in the pistol round that uh, let them do this and ha have their eco be like, okay. Uh, Texture's not going to save for an op, and no one is going to save for an op for him. Uh, maybe Lakia has like the advantage on it, whatever. Monstrous, monstrous Hearthies around. are going to instantly take a main, these. right? Against the anti-eco, right? The, the defenders are the people who are saving have limited options, right? We can run traps with weird numbers, like 1-4 setups, right? We can trap the orbs when people try to farm them, because that's just something that the attackers like to do, right? We can get aggressive, we can take 50-50s, we can run timings, we can gamble. Hearthies just get caught off here. by this. A wide flash comes through with a paranoia, everyone being hit. Texture hits two insane shots, and it's dropped down to a 4v3. Smoke is thrown. He goes for a little spam, and he resets. Lakia here. Great reaction off of seeing how many people were in A main there. He instantaneously pushes and gets the B line. Now A can be reinforced with as many people that are like remaining like alive, and we can go for like a crossfire and end up like trading these guys out. So this is a really nice kind of like reaction from him here. The guns are juggled away, so they can't pick them up. They're not going to want to stray away from this, which is good in my opinion. I think that if they want to go reclear the map, they could they could just kind of like get cheesed by someone in like a super forward position, like this or this or this or this. Right? There's a lot of like variables there that can kind of be like difficult to deal with. So they're going to plan to angle out and rehit here. Dexter on 40 HP with his deagle still. Karen spotting for him, which is really good. He throws the smoke. Blind goes through. Texture's now going to angle out since there's no flashes to be thrown. Excuse me. Excuse me. There were. There, there, there were flashes to be thrown. What are we doing? Wait, 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 wait. I mean, this is an egregious error from Hunter Thieves. Boost your brother. I mean, just, just wait, man. I mean, come on. You're better than this. Smoke going through, blind going through, no one able to capitalize. Usually, when we're in a position where zoning utility is used like that, we'll have a nice follow-up, which would have been that right-click flash, right? Because now that the blind is going through, this guy's calling for help. Someone will come out tree, someone will angle out heaven, someone will angle out dice, and this right-click flash should just own whoever this is. I mean, this is inexcusable. Bustio gets knocked. Asna doesn't even get him. Crouch sprang instantly. Texture on to Ace. Bang in a 1v2. Gonna take his time. He doesn't know where Sova is. Gonna force a plant here. Sorry, tap and angle out and look for one here. I, I would think now that I'm getting flanked if this guy's making this much noise, but the shock darts are going through. He's gonna one way the door position. Lucky is actually gonna be able to drone here. Lock down his position. He hears Meteor going to regroup, and he's actually going to end up to opt to go a little closer than anything. I'm not sure if he knows how much damage has been done to either of these players, but definitely needs to look to fight here. Lakia draws the crosshair, bang with a whiff. Meteor with a one dig, and Gen G get to thrifty 100 thieves here off of just pure laziness. So after a literal game-winning thrifty round win with a texture almost ace, we're just going to shit our pants and lose to a Hunter Thieves Thrifty with a Cryo Hero Vandal. I, 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 I am in disbelief watching this, okay? Man to break down here. Sorry, men. Charon and Munchkin. What is going on in the comms here, guys?
Are you guys allergic to each other? Why are you running away from him when he needs help? Cryo's going to take a dry fight in mid after all this utility is being used. He's going to catch Texture backing up. He's going to get lagged to drop to 10 HP. What's going on here? Are we fighting for the bomb site or are we not? Right? Munchkin is going to quest and he's just going to go find like some things in mid. He's just going to go look around over there. Karen's like, well, I'm fucked. Throwing a sight smoke. Okay, just sitting behind it, up against close range weapons. They know that I'm here now. I don't even get one. Flash comes through. I die and give them a weapon. Now Munchkin's here. Now Munchkin's here with two flashes and a nade. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. You're just going to let him die like that? How on earth is the play going to be to run off Cat when your teammate is getting rushed at A? Dude, blow up that bomb site with all of your utility. Do not let them get out of that choke point. You now understand what the situation is. Jed is top mid with a Vandal, okay? The rest of the team is coming through here with sticks and rocks. Kill them, dude. Like, wh what is that? Meteor instantly has to go for an equalizer and not wait for his team at all, naturally. Munchkin panics and does the same. 4v1 situation. Again, game-winning Thrifty. And they get ecoed right back. Exactly like the caster said. Lockie at 1v4. Didn't even get a chance to play this round. Still has his drone in double shocks. His teammates just ran in and died. Unreal, dude. Yeah, I don't know if this is game planning and anti-strat that I that I don't know because I don't watch the Gen G demos and you know make game plans for going up against them. But we're going to rush A again. Um, as one hire thieves. I mean, MasterCard, who, whoever runs a MasterCard promotion is just jumping up and down in their chair right now, just saying, yippee, yippee. The amount of MasterCard thrifties that are fucking popping up this match is insane. It, I, I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. Gen We're going to rush A again. Shorty for Lockia. Phantom for Meteor, Guardian for Texture, and they're just going to keep the... Mollies are going to get popped. Counter blind's going to go through. Meteor's utility is going to kill two people. All the guns have been picked up. And it's now a 5v2. Trying to force Karen out. They think he goes hell. Waste the remainder of utility on it. They can peek off the turret or they can peek on Meteor's contact. Of course, of course Meteor is fighting in the 5v2 and not letting his turret, right, do the hard work. Of course, right? Of course he has to figure out that that wasn't a good idea by dying and not just remembering how many times he's already fucked up this series. Unbelievable, dude. Karen with another 3k. Just this guy's a multi-kill machine. Back to back to back thrifties. It's unreal. And going back to the stigma of I've never seen anything like this in my life, I'm still going to highlight Meteor here. I mean, I, I have, watching this back, have gained respect for this guy for how little that he cares. I mean, he does not care. He, he is not scared to throw away his life. He is not scared to defend what he thinks is good, fight what he thinks is good. This is literally insanity what's going to happen here. And the man advantage, okay, with a stacked A bomb site going up against 100 Thieves with Cryo on knives in the situation, he is going to angle out against a KO, a drone, and knives with four people scaling, and somehow he's going to come out on top. He is going to give them a taste of their own message and sh me medicine and show them what disrespect actually looks like. Pops his molly on good timing, breaks the drone for himself, peeks out in the open, gets a first blood himself, then re-peeks, killing Bustio and knocking Asuna, and then goes for more. He doesn't even wait for the tap of the res. He just keeps fucking swinging. Like, dude, he just rips his shirt off and the Superman logo is there. Are you kidding me right now, bro? Are you actually kidding me? This has to have taken out like 100 thieves, like um, more emotional players, 100. percent the the amount that they have, the amount of disrespect that they are just like tolerating or having to deal with round after round after round after round, the thrifties, the errors, the bullshit, dude, they got to be checked out at this point. Look at this, dude. Triple flood through the smoke without a flash, dude. Never before seen in my entire life. Bang, 26 HP, 1v2 situation. Slowly walking up, Genji kind of sitting there and waiting, see if he if he'll take a timing, seeing if he'll walk out. He ends up getting one here. He sees someone calls that the bomb is down. He's gonna angle into the bomb site. Caron, another multi-kill. How many times have we said it so far? Legacy game for this guy, man.
just unreal scenes in terms of the prep that Genji had. I mean, that's such a good read on this game. Lakia is so confident on this B bomb site. Time and time again, he has this line by himself. He's fully cleared it out. It's just a really well done, just execution of hard work from the coaches and like the IGL in this situation. Hunter Thieves are going to use, uh, they have three alts online and they're going to run into this A bomb site trying to win this game. As you can see, there's literally no money left. They've forced all the way down. Every single player has light armor. One of them has a bulldog. Okay. We still have full utility, thankfully, but this is the game right here. They either win this round and have a chance to win or they lose and they lose. And they're okay with that, which I respect. Updraft Dash is going in with a paranoia. Dart Flash goes through. Cryo gets nothing. Meteor holding for Bang. Nothing. Karen with one. Meteor with one. Dodging the cell wall. Bang with the only trade immediately shut down. And here we are. Just like we talked about plenty of times in previous videos with someone just being instantly left in a 1v4 based on like this information based crossfire setup that they have that just straight owned them. Hunter Thieves keeping up this fast-paced offense. They're trying to do like a little quick bait play here for Bustier to be able to walk up mid and get some backstabs. But this dart from Lockie is going to own them here. They're going to do their double dash that they continue to do. Omen is constantly TPing with Jet on this map. The dart is going to get three scans here. They're going to get Bang, Cryo, and Austin at logs. E is going to try to angle out to help. Meteor has gone a wall bang. He gets a second. He gets a third. He just keeps peeking. So disruptive. So annoying to deal with. Bustio dropped in the 1v4 again, sitting and waiting. Karen picks up the slack fast. 2-0 Genji. They move on to the upper final and send 100 Thieves down into a grueling lower bracket. I mean, this series was actually insane. And again, like highlighting like this Charon, like unlimited multi-kill and Meteor unlimited overpeak game. I mean, look at the amount of engagements here. We have 14 first engagements on two maps as a Sentinel. I mean, Bustio, in my opinion, who is one of, like, the most aggressive ones, is at seven, right? Like, he's four engagements less than Cryocells, right? <laughs> he's three engagements less than his duelist. I mean, the guy was just fighting to the death nonstop. They just disrespected them. They just pushed people around and just, again, just didn't let them have anything. Like, the flooding the overpeaking, the multi-killing. It was impossible for Hunter Thieves to deal with. Um, I think that this should have gone to three maps, even though Hunter Thieves did not play to their standard today. And I think if it did, I still think Genji would have won um, in the position that they were in. But I, I am still not sold on this team whatsoever to win this event by any means. Uh, they really need to clean up this, like, um, this, like, not really being able to see through like the fog when it gets like a little weird in these like XVX situations when they're in when they're in the advantage when they're in the disadvantage right they're not processing like inf information fast enough for me and again they're relying on these individual moments way 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 too much and it, I, don't, I don't think that it's a, a realistic thing to continue to rely on in this game as it's proven you know years and years and years in a row Hunter Thieves now sent down again to that lower. I mean, here's our grand final matchup in the lower of round two. Insanity. Hunter Thieves versus Paper Rex. And then the the winner of that gets to play Heretics or Foot. Two teams you do not want to play right now. Okay. Even though Foot did fall to one Hunter Thieves in kind of like a dominant fashion, they take down Fnatic and they move on to Team Heretics. Here's our just like EU off right here. Unfortunately, a one team region. It is what it is. You know, I don't make the rules, I just enforce them. And then in our upper final, we have G2 versus Gen G. Both teams full of just like momentum and confidence right now. I think that G2 are kind of like the underdog in this. I'm not going to lie. I don't necessarily think that they're the favorite, but I do think that they could sneak this win uh, off of G2, even or off of Gen G in even 2 0 fashion. So we're just going to have to see how that plays out. Uh, it's going to be a couple of days till that happens here. But I appreciate everybody tuning in. Thank you so much for that. Um, the support, again, has been overwhelming, and I, I just thank you so much. Make sure you guys follow along with my Twitch stream as well. Everything below is linked in the description, my socials, Instagram, Twitter, you know, anything you're interested in following me along on. It means a lot to me. Um, so, yeah, definitely check that out. And if you want to get better at the game, you can join my Discord and check out the Valorant coach and coaching options that I offer. And, you know, I'm looking to uh, see a message from you. I coach all players, all regions. I can help you accomplish any goal that you want to do. So hit me up. I'm definitely, like, your best option. I got more of these coming out. Still covering all of Master Shanghai. It's been a really crazy event so far. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Thank you again. Dude, I got it here. Deuces.